Hello everybody, a warm welcome to another interview on Wisdom from North. I'm Janneke and today I'm super excited to be here again with Sita P.K., former Katie Bray. Sita is an energy worker, she's a gifted empath and a lifelong clairvoyant and honestly one of my favorite teachers. She's also our featured masterclass teacher in the membership where she's teaching the class Activate Your Manifestation Powers and you can read all about the class and the membership in the link below. And today we're going to speak about the law of attraction and manifestation so let's get into it. Hello, Sita PK. How are you doing? Welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. How are you? I'm very good. And I'm excited about hearing about your life right now because you just got married. You even mm-hmm. your name, not just your, no, yeah. your last name, but like your whole name. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm like curious about that. And I want to start there yeah. before we go into manifestation, law of attraction. Sita PK. Why did you change it and what does it even mean? Yeah, well, it's quite a story. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, so my, my full spiritual name is actually Sita Pramjit Kar, um, which is really from the Sikh lineage. The, so when I, when I say Sita PK, that's the Pramjit Kar. I happen to like shorter names. <laughs> so I shortened it. Um, and It's a name that I got a a long while ago um, from one of my my own gurus. Um, And for me, I thought it was going to be similar to the times that I've gotten mantras. Um, But when I've gotten my personal mantras, even though I've used them, I didn't I didn't really have a big like, oh, this is my mantra. Like, I really feel it opening me up. I, I really did have a powerful experience of them, which is not true for everyone, by the way was my experience. When I got my name, it was like something echoed in me and it felt timeless. It felt like something so deep that I, I, I can't even find words for was touched. And so of course that got my attention. Never in a million years did I actually think that I would be changing my name though, like to the outside world. For me, I thought, okay, great. You know, I'll meditate on it in the morning in my, my own personal practice. And, you know, but it was like, it kept haunting me. It was like this part of me, because that's what I realized. It was actually this part of me that really wanted to expand. What I call it is really my essence. It's the name of my essence. And I could feel that this part of me wanted more space and wanted more space and Um, I'm going to be totally honest that there was this superficial part of me that went, oh my gosh, this is going to be a nightmare for business and branding. And like, I've authored books, I've got these videos, I've got course. I was like, oh, so I was honestly, that was one of the reasons why I was putting it off. And, and, and I know that's superficial. That's 100% where I was though. (laughs) Um, and so when my husband and I received our wedding date, because we follow Vedic astrology, so we, we, we went according to our Vedic chart, which is, um, you know, astrology from the, the more Eastern philosophy. Um, in my meditation, like a week and a half before our ceremony, I knew it was like I was hit with this bolt of lightning. I knew for sure that when I married my amazing partner, that I wanted it to be Sita. I wanted it to be the essence of me stepping in and committing to this relationship. And that it was time that Katie um, just sort of go off and, you know, and and for, for Sita to really be the presence in my life and, and the way of my own unfolding. And so that's really how it happened. We got married in August uh, of 2020 and, um, and at the ceremony, that was when I stepped in with my full, my full spiritual name. I think you're really brave. Um, I mean, I'm so attached to my name. (laughs) You can't believe 
But what I find interesting is that perhaps you feel a change of identity in a sense. Yeah. Uh, some teachers are talking a lot about like stepping into a new form of identity. For instance, yeah. if you create something like manifest something. Uh, let's say you want to start to create more blogs uh, every week. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it can help uh, to change your identity to say to yourself, I I'm a person who creates blogs every week, even though that was right. before, this is my new version. And I would imagine yes. that you having a new name, you are like uh, having help from the name in this new identity. It's true. I mean, that's definitely part of it because it is about the vib vibrational pattern of the name. And when, when, you feel a connection the way that I do with with mine, there is this expansiveness, there is this shift where um, I, I did feel very inspired to do certain things in ways that I have never done them before. Um, so I could feel this whole sense of newness. And, and what I wanna say too though is, it's important to understand that this was a very organic process for me, that this wasn't a denial of Katie, this wasn't a denial of, I don't want to be that person anymore. I, I'd rather be this person. It wasn't, it wasn't at that level. It was this birthing and this expansion of this vibrational frequency that was ready to just be born out of, out of me. And so just want to make that little distinction because it's funny. I've been getting friends and clients and all kinds of people saying, Oh, it's inspired me to find my own name. And which I think is really beautiful. And I wasn't doing something to create a trend. Um, I wasn't doing something cause like, Oh, it's the cool thing to do, you know? And I'm not saying that that's what people are saying for me. This was a very, very sacred sort of inner pilgrimage, a very sacred journey. And, and I knew that that was the next most expansive step for me. And so I just listened and I took it. Beautiful. I just have to do like this. There's something in my eye going on. <laughs> it's very strange. Sometimes when I start to shoot video, I get some issues with my eyes and stuff. You're uh, empathing me because I've had something in this eye all morning and it's been driving me crazy. <laughs> interesting. I was like, what just happened? <laughs> We're spending way too much time together. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Kate, so you're having a masterclass about uh, activating your manifestation powers. What is like that pitfall that you see people fall into mm -hmm. when it comes to they want to manifest this, they want to manifest that. And like a typical example is manifesting, you know, more abundance or money or even a relationship. What are you yeah. seeing is like not totally aligned here? Yeah, what I see is that there is a lot of trying. There's a lot of forced attempts, forced effort. Um, and you know, a lot of people know the term, um, that it's from really David Hawkins, but the power versus force. So the conversation that we're really having in this, um, in this masterclass and what I see often is truly the difference between power versus force, that there's a lot of forced willpower, forcing the energy, forcing the universe, or, similar to what I was just saying about my name change. It's like, well, I don't want to keep experiencing this. So I'm going to go after that where it's, it's sort of a, a place of running away from something. And so all of that is a lot about using our willpower to will something into existence. And that's not the level that creation really flows. It's not that that doesn't produce results. It certainly can. Um, but it, it can, actually not produce results. It can slow down our production of results. It can create a lot of internal tension. Um, it can create a lot of chaos. It can create a lot of attachment, which is, is none of the places that are really going to really magnetize our manifestations. And so I, I like to take the conversation a little bit higher and say, no, it really is about us being truly in our power, which is eliminating this idea of trying and doing. And, and, and at the same time, it's not about being lazy and sitting on the sofa and just going, okay, well, then it's just going to come to me because that's not accurate either. It, it's really, we need to 
um, work on our entire energy system in a way that it can hold and magnetize the manifestations that we want to bring into our life. And so there is an active nature to it, but it's not forced and it's not about willpower. And so that's so why I was really excited to do this class because I, I want to start sort of eliminating that conversation. Hmm. And the way I see it, uh, as humans, we have different levels of consciousness. We have uh, almost different realities in a sense. And we th yeah. look at reality through our own glasses and it's just so different. And for some people, like the vision boards have worked really, really well. For others, it does not work. And I'm curious mm -hmm. about that. Does that have to do with the level or expanded consciousness you have? that it's actually individual what teaching works for different people sometimes? Absolutely, that can be the case. There's no question, because um, I don't think there's really any one way for everyone. I just don't believe it. And I think that that's where using our own intuition and really feeling into what resonates with me, what resonates with you, that's the way to go, right? And and something might resonate now and not later. So I think it's always great to learn um, different approaches because we may need we may need to remember them for different times. Now, I love the vision board example because it's so common. And I also know a lot of people who have had incredible success with a vision board. And and I definitely think it's a fantastic tool. There's there's no question about that. Um, and what we manifest happens on so many different levels. So it's manifestation has to do with the strength of our electromagnetic field. Some people just naturally are born with a really strong electromagnetic field. And so for someone like that, when they're looking at a vision board, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> literally like a magnet. And, and it could be that they were born that way because people who are born that way. There are many of us, however, who don't have as strong of a magnetic uh, electromagnetic field because perhaps we've had a good bit of trauma in our lives. Perhaps um, we've had a lot of stress that has sort of made our electromagnetic field, which is very much like the nervous system, that it's really sort of eroded our nervous system. So it's things like that that can make it harder for, for people like uh, vision boards have I've done some of them and ultimately I seem to, to attract or, or gain everything that's on them. Um, but it usually takes a long time. It, 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 it's not a practice that's ever been very strong for me. I find my practices is when I work on my energy field, things just flow in a different way because I'm someone who has had a lot of trauma in my life. Um, and I know that that impacted my electromagnetic field in a huge way. There's also... Honestly, this is a whole other conversation, but there's karmic ties to what we manifest and how quickly we manifest things. There's soul contracts that are connected to what we manifest and how we manifest things. There's what are the different patterns within our 10 body system? What are the patterns within our chakra system? So though, as you can hear, there's so many different um, ways of working with something like um, the, the different levels of consciousness and, and which one are we on? Because um, I find in different areas of our lives, many of us can be on different levels of consciousness. Maybe, maybe we've grown more in the relationship category and not as much in our financial um, area of our lives. Things like that make a difference because they actually sort of create this incongruency or out of alignment um, of energetic frequency. So the work is to make our entire system, mind, body, spirit, whole, strong, robust, magnetic, healthy, pure, and then we can use whatever tool we want and it's gonna, it's gonna help. Mm. I'm really glad you're explaining that because I think there are a lot of people feeling that they're failing when it comes to manifestation, they're doing something wrong. They're attracting exactly the opposite sometimes, uh, which is interesting when we work so much on ourselves and we attract exactly our pattern, what we don't want. Yes. And uh, I don't know if you have any comments on that, but I, I think I sometimes that we 
that uh, the universe is showing us, you know, do you really, really want this? Like, even yeah. though you've done a lot of work, it's like, yeah. here it is again. Now you have another chance to show that you're beyond. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think there's there's a few reasons that I see that are most common um, as to why, you know, we're working towards one thing. So why am I getting the exact opposite? Um, definitely what you just said, I think, is a very important one. Um, I also see that... Um, there, there is, there is the law of polarity and that's a real thing as well. And that it's not, it's not the negative thing that it might sound like. It's not the scary thing that it might sound like. Um, but when we are really using our true power that we all have, and we all have access to, it's just learning about how to access it and strengthen it. We automatically, um, activate the exact opposite of what it is that we want to bring in because everything is it, you, we've probably most people have heard this term the all is in the all I'm so I'm just going to say that the all is in the all and so when we are looking towards manifesting this one thing we are actually bringing to life and activating every single aspect of it which includes its exact opposite and so our work is to find our way through that and not believe in what we feel like it's telling us because what it's usually reflecting back to many of us is, okay, yeah, that was stupid of me to believe that I could manifest that in the first place. I told you so. It's never going to happen. Maybe I feel like I don't deserve it. You know, all the stories. What's important about those stories is our beliefs are being revealed to us through activating this law of polarity. So if we can not look at this law of polarity as validating these beliefs that aren't working for us, but rather saying, wow, it's illuminating the beliefs that don't work for me. Let me work on these while the universe keeps working on this manifestation on my behalf. And then I will actually be ready to hold this manifestation, to really embrace it and, and be with it in my life experience. And, and I see that all of that happen a lot. That's beautifully explained. Uh, trust is very important here. I think sometimes we're too fast, but this is not working yes. for me. And especially yes. the, you know, seeing your beliefs is not always a pleasant thing, but it's really necessary. And really to, to kind of keep on uh, anchoring yourself in that healthy place, in those healthy yeah. boundaries. No, no, yeah, boundaries, but uh, beliefs. Absolutely. Because sure. going back to the default is the easiest thing. Like this is the safest thing. But actually Absolutely. getting out of that is like the, the, that's when we become those heroes, really. And that's where we become magnetic. I'm, and I'm really glad that you just said it the way that you did, because if we're looking at it, you know, I'm thinking again about the master class and the way that we talk about it in the master class is we're working on really creating a strong auric field, a strong electromagnetic field that, that truly and literally magnetizes. When we are working towards something, what we're doing is we are expanding our magnetic field in the ideal scenario. We're expanding, we're expanding. When we fall back into the comfort of the beliefs that we've, we've sort of used as like a little blankie to, to, you know, like little kids and their little pacifiers or their blankets, we actually contract our magnetic field. So it is a conversation still about our magnetic field and what we are commanding and how we are commanding it. We go back into old beliefs, we go, which is not what is being called out of us when we are manifesting. When we're manifesting, it's going like this. So we have to be willing to travel into the unknown and to trust and to have faith to be able to truly magnetize. We have to get out of our old stories and that's the work. I love how you're saying commanding because it's so empowering that we're commanding yeah. our energy and working with it. It's like the totally opposite of the victim. And uh, yeah. you, you also speak about the Kundalini technology in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share a little bit about how or, and why that has been an important part of your work, the Kundalini tradition? 
Yeah. Well, it, it has, I tell you what, it has changed my life. Like I can't even tell you, um, just it, 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 it there's something magical about it. Um, and so, and I'm someone who practices a lot of things. And then if, if I really feel like they hold value, that's when I like to teach them. But I, I have to have personal experiences with things myself before I really share them. And because the, the, these have been some of the most powerful things I've ever come across in my life, I it's like, I just, I want everyone to know uh, like how much we can shift things. Um, and, and what was really the, the core of the Kundalini technology is, um, it is a combination of yoga. I call it the weird yoga because it is very strange. <laughs> Some of the things that you need to do, not to scare anyone, is just my little disclaimer. It's not lost on me that some of this stuff is weird. I'm doing But it's so, <laughs> see? Yeah. But it's so powerful. It's like, who cares? I know. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. My gosh. And usually you feel something immediately. Something shifts immediately that you can feel. And so I love that too. So there's a yogic component. There's use of mantra because sound current is really one of the most powerful currents that we can use. It aligns our energy. It works with our, our entire bodies, you know, our whole energy system. Um, it's, it's this beautiful commingling between our cosmic blueprint and the cosmic, the greater cosmic blueprint. So there's yoga, there's mantras, there's breathing, which moves a lot of old energy. It it's, you can imagine blowing into a balloon and inflating a balloon. That's sort of what the, the breathing techniques um, in, in the Kundalini technology do. It's like you're expanding your auric field, your magnetic field, your capacity for manifestation. And then we use things like mudras with the fingers um, and with the hands because everything about this technology is pointing us into the fact that we are made up of the five elements and the five elements are what all manifestations come from. So we're going to use our different fingers that represent different elements that represent different planets. And we're going to use the energy of those elements that are within our body so that we become a part of this cosmic dance because that's really what it is. And so using our body truly as the temple of the divine that it is, lines us up with our divinity. It lines us up so that we can command the, the power that we come here with and we come here to utilize. We come here to be creative. We come here to be like these little versions of the divine experiencing and creating. And so when we use um, many of the practices that I love to share and talk about, that's exactly what we're doing to ourselves on all levels, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, I was curious, isn't there four elements? Like what, what, uh, what is the fifth? In, in the Ayurvedic, which is my background. So that's the other thing about Kundalini. It fits in beautifully with my Ayurvedic background. The, the five elements are, um, ether. So space, oh. air, and then we have fire and then we have earth and then we have water. And so all creation starts in this, in the Akash in the, where it's just potential. Like there's, everything is potential. And then the air starts to make it, it create the movement of this potential. And then it becomes able to be transformed in the fire. That's what the fire does. And the water helps it grow and flow and the earth really grounds it. And so that's actually what I just described is one aspect of the way we use our bodies, the way we use this cosmic energy through ourselves to manifest. That is that is the manifestation process in it from one perspective. We don't really get into that piece in the man, in the manifestation um, class that we're doing, the master class. Um, but it's important to honor and recognize. And within the practices, we are naturally doing that. Hmm. That makes sense, you know, that etheric, that that's yes. included, like in the, when we speak about it, because, but obviously that's a perspective that it all starts there. That's totally. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
And I love in the class how you speak about actually how an idea comes to you and how it goes through all the different chakras. So you speak about that, and that is your energy architecture. Uh, and you also speak about the Kundalini technology with the 10 bodies. But the energy architecture, is that something that is like your body of work? Is that something you uh, have seen because you're clairvoyant? Is that something you've discovered? Or how did this energy architecture yeah, come about? Yeah, it, it really... It was definitely a discovery um, because when I work with people, what I'm what I'm most interested in is looking in the eighth chakra, which gives a lot of information um, and some of the information in our eighth chakra, which is just above the seventh chakra, just above the head. And actually, if you can imagine because the eighth chakra does make up part of the auric field. So if you can imagine you have a big light bulb over your head, we'll say that's the eighth chakra and the light coming down from that light bulb would be your auric field. So in the eighth chakra, one of the things that's in there are the things that you are here to manifest in this life experience, especially the things that are it could be purpose, it could be a job, it could be a relationship, it could be important life experiences that you feel like you need to have, you know, whatever it is, um, those things are going to be in your eighth chakra. And so I started to observe as I was working with people and, and again, looking in that, in that eighth chakra is how the energy moves down into the seventh chakra, that's sort of when you're like, oh my gosh, I have this idea, I have this thought, I really want to experience this, I really want to manifest this. When you have an aha moment or a moment like that where it really hits you, that's when you know something is just literally sort of dripped down and energy is dripped down from your eighth chakra into your seventh. And so it's something that I work with clients on. And so it's it's the process that I describe and I explain in a lot more detail in the master class is how do you know which chakra you're in when you're in the process of manifestation? Why I love that is if you find yourself getting stuck, you can use the information as reference and say, oh, those are the characteristics in this chakra. This is where I'm probably stuck. That means this is where I need to do my work. So I love it as sort of a self-diagnostic tool um, that people can just use forever and ever. So to me, I love that. It's powerful. I just want to jump in and ask, have you had a Kundalini awakening? A lot of people speak about the Kundalini awakening. I, I actually have, and what's interesting is with the practices that, that I'm teaching, it is actually all in support of giving your body that kundalini awakening experience. So that is another added benefit to them is we're actually working with the kundalini energy, literally, that's at the base of the spine and you know wants to rise up. One of the things about the technology, though, itself is that what it's doing is that it's doing it in a more gentle way because those experiences can be when they're like spontaneous, which, which mine was, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, mm -hmm. they can actually be very uncomfortable, like really uncomfortable. And they can cause a lot of different, sometimes not so pleasant side effects. Um, if it happens too fast, sometimes it's not that way, of course. Um, but, but it is a very powerful energy. And so doing it in a way that doesn't fry your energy system, I think is ideal. And that's what these practices are meant to do. Now, my experience, oh my goodness, it was a few years ago. And at first I thought that I had um, some kind of bladder infection, which I've never had a bladder infection in my life. I was in a lot of pain and discomfort. So the, literally it was like within the next day or two, I felt like I had menstrual cramps, which given where I was in, in the month, it was like, I should not be having menstrual cramps right now, but they were really bad. And then within the next few days, I had a lot of stomach upset and I was having terrible stomach issues within the next couple of days, I was having heart palpitations. Wow. My heart was doing these weird, exactly. And so I'm like, 
and and it, while this is all going on, like I feel like I need to be in bed. I don't have energy. I'm like sweating. I feel awful. I haven't been sick in years. So I'm like, what is going on? I didn't realize at that point yet that that's what was happening because this this was about a week over a week week and a half so after the heart palpitations and i'm like i've got a sore throat and my neck is really sore like what is going on and then i get a migraine <laughs> and it was my husband that was like um sweetie <laughs> do you think maybe and i was like oh my gosh so fortunately at the time there was a kundalini yoga studio like practically next to my house and it was where I would go to classes and even though I did not feel up to going um, to a class I was also really disoriented with the headache so that was the other thing this migraine and I was completely disoriented I went to a class and I knew I couldn't do anything but I thought even if I just lie there um, and I let them know what was going on. And sure enough, they validated that this was definitely a Kundalini experience and that I, I did need to be careful because I was having such physical mm -hmm. symptoms and such a physical reaction. Um, and then it was crazy because it was within, within a couple of days, I was fine. Like it was as if something just moved right through me and I was, I was fine. And I, I definitely felt more elevated, more expansive, more like, ah, and at first I'm like, yeah, but that could be because I just felt awful for a week and a half. I mean, who isn't going to be happy? <laughs> right. Um, but, but, but that was my experience. And it, it honestly, it, it was not pleasant. It wasn't pleasant. That's interesting. I mean, I've heard many stories about this, so that is quite, can be challenging for people. And, uh, yes, if you're, you are not in your right mind also like um have a mental disorder it can be yes it can be really I, bad very uh so has your life changed after this I, i'm just wondering like okay what actually changes right so that's a great question i i feel like it's different for everyone for me personally after feeling sick for that time it's kind of, it was kind of uneventful. I don't know if that's because I've always been multisensory mm. or I, I don't know. I've, I've, I've been on a consciously on a spiritual journey for so long mm. that I didn't notice any huge differences for myself. I honestly didn't. Um, and I know people who have had very different experiences where everything changed for them that all of a sudden, I all of a sudden, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so cool. But I personally, mm. I did, I didn't experience that. Mm. Interesting. Fascinating. Uh, a bit back to these exercises. Um, I mean, we worked together before. You have a co course called Mastering Your Cosmic Purpose. We're going to uh, put it up again because it was so uh, successful and people wanted more. And there you show, show, um, showed us, taught, taught us some exercises and I'm doing them every day. And I really feel great doing them. And now I'm going to do those next exercises that you're sharing in the masterclass. Um, but can you tell us a little bit, so wh what are we doing with these exercises? We're strengthening the magnetic field, uh, mm -hmm. I understand. And the magnetic field is what is the attractor. Uh, yes. But also it is for us to hold onto what we've attracted so we don't lose it again, right? Exactly. So, um, and there, so there's a few different um, practices that I give in the master class. The first one, um, they all really work well on the uh, magnetic field, particularly the first two. Um, the the first one, though, is it's very purifying of the system. So, of course, we want a strong magnetic field, but we also want to make sure that we're clear and pure because. You know, if we have a bunch of junk in there, we don't necessarily want to attract more of that. So we make sure that with this practice, we're actually purifying our systems. And then we're in that we're, you know, increasing our field of energy. Um, there's another part of 
of it. Or there's another one where it would, like I was talking about the fingers and the mudras, we actually work with, um, the energy that is, um, connected to each, our, each of our fingers so that you can start to really utilize the, um, basically the path of creation that is already in your body. That's what you're working with. That's what you're touching. And that's what your, um, really sort of integrating your energy in with is being a part of creation, uh, which I, I think is really, really cool. And, and a piece of that one is, um, cause we're, we do this in one of them, there's more to it than this, but I'm just showing you in doing this, um, and everything else that's with it, we are actually calling our energy back from the past and calling our energy back from the future. Because this is another thing that I see. Oftentimes people try to manifest, but they're so worried about the future or they're so scared about being hurt again, like they were in the past that their energy is everywhere, but here and now. And the only place that we can create and create a, a something pure is in the here and now. And so this practice is meant to help us do just that, is to get our, our energy here now. And it also works with our relationship energy. So that's, I mean, certainly that could be romantic relationship, but it's relationship with the thing that we desire. It's relationship with the cosmic forces. It's relationship with ourselves. It's, it's bringing ourselves back into relationship with this cosmic frequency. Um, and then another practice that we do is, it's really about, I, I kind of call it the mind dump. Um, it is about working with the mind field. And, and there's a way that we work with it where we're working on reprogramming the channels of the brain, the energy of the brain, and we're getting rid of negative thought patterns. And it's funny because this one, when you first started, it's like, okay, this is kind of simple. This seems like I'm not really doing much of anything. And then the longer you do it, you're like, Oh my God, you like your negativity starts to come up a little bit. And it's like, Oh, that's what this is about. <laughs> I love that. I'm so excited about it. And guys, oh, I just wanted to say that you can, you can find all about the membership below. And this class is featured in October, 2020, and it will always stay in the membership. And Katie and I are also going to do a live Q and A. So if you become a member, if this is for you, if you feel drawn to this, you can be part of the Q and A where you can, where you can ask direct questions to Katie. And this is very popular because uh, Katie sees beyond the veil. So you might have some really personal questions answered. So mm -hmm. check it out if you feel called to. I'd love for you to join the membership. And we're open for enrollment a while longer before we close enrollment and then just focus on the membership. Uh, I also wanted to just ask a last question about that letting go. Like a lot of teachers speak about you have, when you manifest, you, you should let go. And then you, I saw your class and you spoke about one of the bodies. Like this will be a bit technical if people haven't seen the class, but um, there are different bodies in the uh, Kundalini technology. And the fourth one is the neutral mind. Uh, and I was thinking the neutral mind, having a neutral mind instead of being like four or negative, like super positive or super negative, having a neutral mind, is that kind of the same as letting go? It is. It's very similar. And I, and I, uh... I love that you're making that connection because the way that I see it, the, the neutral mind is also called the meditative mind mm -hmm. um, in that body. That's what it's called. And what it really points us to is, is not being neutral, like, oh, I don't care, whatever happens, happens, because that's too passive of a state when we're looking to manifest, right? So we don't want to be overly passive either. But what we want to do is allow that desire to sort of dance around us while we are in command of our energy. So when I'm neutral and I'm really commanding my energy, my focus is on making sure that I am fully present, that I am strong enough, that I am receptive enough, that I am all the things that I need to be so that when it wants to dance my way, that it, it just comes right here. So there is a sort of detachment and a letting go, but there is still an act relationship that you have with that desire and, and taking ourselves to the neutral mind um, is a beautiful place to learn how to be in that very nuanced 
place. Because again, if we're like willing ourselves to be in a place of, yes, I'm in relationship with this, but I'm also detached. It's like our minds want to go crazy with that. And how do I do this? And how do I, we get out of here and we learn how to be in that dance of letting go while being in still relationship with the things that we desire. I really love your approach because will is great and I've used a lot will in my life, yep. but it's really tiresome also to just yes. to do this. I have to do this. It seems like, yes. like uh, connected with that working hard, so hard, so yes. hard. Yes. And instead of allowing and working on my energy field. And I, after I started doing your exercises, I feel stronger in my body as well. It just, I feel really good in my body. Which, yes then again um, makes me feel uh, more confident like it has this beautiful consequences so it's really it a really beautiful does. circle it's beautiful yeah I love that you're having that experience what you're saying makes me think of one thing that I think is really really important to say because I understand that um, different people have different capacities with their body um, some who you know, maybe you have arthritis in your, your hands and you're not able to work with your hands in the way that you saw me do it or, or whatever it is. Um, none of the practices offered in this class are um, beyond anyone, first and foremost. And second, one of the things that I absolutely love about these kinds of practices is if you physically are not able to do um, do any of them. It is said that if you close your eyes, stay with your breath and you visualize and imagine that you are doing these exercises, that you are actually still getting 70% of the benefit. Mm -hmm. And I have in my experience seen that to be true for people. So I just wanted to mention that if anyone has any kind of physical limitations that would prohibit them from feeling like they can do any of them, I don't want you to worry about that. It doesn't mean that this is not for you. It's just that you'll work with it in a different way. And you will still be able to gain what it is that you need to gain from it. Mm, very important. I'm glad you added that. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Katie, again, for your wisdom. We're super excited to have you back in the membership and uh, can't wait for everything else you will create. I, I know you have a lot going on. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm very excited and so happy to have done another class. And thank you everybody for watching and if you feel attracted to this if you feel like learning more about this check out the link to the membership and see if this is for you we're open now a while longer in october before we close enrollment for some time thank you so much for watching and much light from norway and the us bye bye